one and 21 years ago, 9-11 in Afghanistan. Brandon Gentile here. One year, as I reflect on the year since the fall of Afghanistan and the 21st anniversary of 9-11, all I can think of is how soon we all forget, all of us, me included, how soon we forget, how short our attention span is. We just did a video on this recently in a blog post, how short it is. Less than a goldfish? Really? Truly? We wonder why we have the same problems over and over and over and over again. Why we keep repeating the same mistakes. Why this fourth turning always is happening over and over again. Yes, some of it will always persist. Some of it will always happen in life. But why, why aren't we learning from the past mistakes of others? So that way we can exponentially grow humanity. How easily we let others dictate our lives. Whether it's something, a slogan in an end zone. And we all know what we're talking about here. On the backs of helmets. What people are going to tell us on the news, the media, the mainstream media, and, and what our employers are going to tell us in not making decisions for ourselves in our own lives, our own choices, our focus. How long, being told how long uh, we're, we're going to stare at and how long we're going to stare at it. This is sheep. It's not people. We're God's highest form of creation. It's time to start acting like it, using our higher faculties, the things that we have that animals do not have, will, reason, intuition, intellect. How it started? 21 years ago, I was in high school. 21 years ago, I was in high school walking into my second hour, civics and economics, ironically, seeing this on TV. How versus how it's going. So how it started, and here's how it's going 20 years later, and $7 trillion later. I believe that's the, the figure. Someone can fact check that. But I believe it's $7 trillion. We've wasted thousands of our men, women, and blood, their lives gone. So, so sickening, so saddening. Hundreds of thousands of, uh, of people dying in the Middle East because of us going there. For what reason? What was it for? If we really wanted, we're going we're gonna to create a video soon, on this, uh, soon, stopping war and the cost of war and how we can stop war very easily with proof of work, with Bitcoin instead of proof of war. If we really wanted to send a message to somebody, wouldn't you just bomb them back to the Stone Ages for a week? Literally obliterate the entire country? Gone, done, over. Cost you a billion bucks instead of seven trillion. A fraction of the price, no live lost on your side, and every single person in the world will be looking over their shoulder like, what in the world just happened? We better never mess with that country again. Isn't that what you would do? Seemingly, I think that's what you might do. Hmm, you know, it's just me. Just using, trying to use some common sense here. But going into a country, raiding countries that didn't or did have things to do with it, protecting our petrodollar, doing who knows what and who knows where for 20 years. Think of the families but destroyed, the wealth destroyed for all of us. And the families destroyed that had loved ones there that, that passed away. The mental issues that are now have risen from that. The epidemic, the pandemic that that is. The people, 20 or 22 veterans a day committing suicide. It's absolute insanity. A lot of it from this war. And then here, here are the images. I didn't even show you some of the other ones. Obviously, we've all seen some of the other gruesome images coming from this. And the, the evacuations, just like Saigon and Vietnam. I mean, it's, it's, it's appalling. And it's predictable. We're going to keep letting this continue because we don't learn from our mistakes. Ridiculous exit strategies against all advice, leaving tens of thousands of people in the lurch and fearing for their life and leaving 50 to $100 billion in assets to our enemies to pay off cronies all around the world. It's 10, there's 10% 10 for the big guy. Not a great strategy for keeping your country safe nor giving your allies confidence in you. But again, when you've cut backroom deals and you're enriching yourself through the people and the currency printer and through your position of power, then yeah, there's a, there's a special place in H-E-L-L -L for you. Mind you, I'm not the one that decides that. So maybe I'm wrong, but that's just me. Again, that's your only job as a president in the United States. That's it. And again, here's a, a great a great infographic of all the things that were given. It's just gone, done. There you go. Congrats, guys. Happy birthday. Why do wars persist? I'm not here to fight red or blue, liberal conservative. I left that fight 12 years ago, 10 years ago. Gone, done. Fought it for 10, 12 years, and I've, I left it 12 years ago. It's been a 20-plus year journey for me. Black, white, liberal conservative, red or blue, those are losing battles. You'll never win it. That's just them in the Coliseum, in the Coliseum showing you what to look at. Oh, look at Minneapolis in May of 2020 or June of 2020. Look here, guys. That happens all the time. Stuff like that is happening all the time, yet most people have no idea that that's happening all the time. And yet, oh, that was the time. That was the time to drop the grenade into the TNT bucket 
I mean, we're, are we really that big of fools? Are we really that apathetic and that ignorant to what's going on in this world? And who's, here, look over here, and we're going to tell you how long to look at it, everybody. Just sickening. Absolutely sickening. And yet, here they are behind the Coliseum. Hey, guys, go look at the gladiators here fighting each other and killing each other. And you guys arguing about total nonsense while we're over here sending our 75th or 70. $5 billion to Ukraine, our 16th, 17th, 18th package sent to Ukraine. Don't know anyone that's voted for that. I, I, I haven't met one person that's voted for any of those packages. Just sending them to Ukraine, telling people to get little Ukraine flags in their profiles. That's really real. Really sent a message to Putin for taking Russian hockey players and doxing their names or doxing the, the U.S. Open. They were not putting the Russian country up on the next to the Russian players' names. Really stuck at the Putin there, guys. And then here we are. Putin's turning off the tap, which we could have saw 10 years ago. We, we all saw it 10 years, ago, 10 years ago. Who was paying attention? Turning off the tap, and now people are going to be freezing all winter in, in Europe because winning, I guess, right? Because of, woo, we got them. Ukraine flags in our profiles. Yet Putin's just laughing all the way, all the way to the bank. He's got gold. You know he's got Bitcoin. He's mining those things. He's got all the resources, all the commodities. So his balance sheet's grown like a, like a banshee right now. And they're all in it together at the end of the day. World Economic Forum, Klaus, Xi, Putin, all these people. They're all in it together. Come on. They all talk to each other. They all hobnob together at their consortiums together. This is not difficult to see what's going on. This is why all of our videos and everything we have is about becoming self-reliant, becoming independent, and, and building your community, building the people around you, building your fortress, building your citadel, and, and re being resilient so you can withstand the nation state attacks from your own countries, from other countries, from everyone around you, from the security, food, uh, money. Uh, what are the three big pillars? Money, food, energy. Henry Kissinger. If you control those things, you control the world. So get those three things in order because this fight has started. It started years ago, a couple decades ago, quite honestly. But now it's really ratcheting up. We're coming to the, you know, it happened, you know, just incrementally. And then we're going to the suddenly part here soon. This decade is suddenly. And this is where things are going to get real wild if we're not paying attention, if we're not standing up for freedom and, and free market capitalism. Now, again, why do wars persist? I'm not here to fight. Like I said, it's a losing fight. The Coliseum, losing fight. Always have been and always will, always will be. Precisely why George Washington warned us about the two-party system in his farewell address over 200 years ago. Two-party system is easily co-opted and coerced by mobs and money. That's why so many people say democracy, democracy, democracy. We don't have a democracy. Purposely do not have a democracy. The founders wrote about this all the time because democracy turned into mobs right here. Mobs. They are mobs. Majority rule. That's why we don't have a democracy. We have a constitutional republic. Yet people don't even know that. That should be the citizenship test. If you want to be a citizen, you need to understand that. There are five, five questions, ten questions. What's the capital? How many states are there? What kind of form of government do we have? What are the three branches of government? And most people have no idea. They couldn't even tell you. Most people couldn't even tell you who the president is right now. You watch the, the interviews on college campuses, and the people are so completely lost and sedated by their pot shops in the corner, by their alcohol, by their eating Snickers bars all day long, by the 17 different pills they take, by sports gambling and sports betting on every channel possible, and just locked in and glued in like this. One eye open, staying up all night, just hopped up on sugar and high fructose corn syrup, and... What do we have? We have? Are we at the beginning of an empire or are we at the end of an empire? You tell me. Every other billboard you drive down the road is a college for crying out loud. It's a complete racket. Complete racket. And then every other one is a pot shop billboard. Well, what are we doing? Are we at the beginning of an empire or the end of an empire? You tell me. The plebs are left with no good options. The two-party system, the plebs are left with no options and zero place to go. George Washington, his farewell address. Political parties are likely to become potent engines which, by which cunning, ambitious, and unprincipled men will be enabled to subvert the power of the people and to usurp for themselves the reins of government. And a lot of that, again, they wrote about central banking a lot. That was through central banking, a lot of it. And I just tweeted out earlier, people think, and, and not even many people, 5 or 10% of people that, that follow money, things like that, they say, oh, you work for three, four, five months out of the year just for the government. Well, that's wrong. That's actually wrong in and of itself. So most people don't even know who they're working for. Most people are enslaved by central banks, and they work most of their year for the central banks. The central banks are the ones that create all the currency. And then the government issues bonds that sit on the balance sheets of the Fed, the Federal Reserve, the central banks. And then we pay off, our taxes go to pay off the interest on those debts, on those bonds, that the central banks get to take that. So whoever is the owner of the central banks, Rothschilds, you name it, you know, JP Morgan Chase, all the biggest barons of the world, they're the ones that profit. So they used to have the fat cat sitting there, the unproductive class doing nothing, 
and bilking taxes and fees and interest off of the entire world. They they run the world. That's why they run the world. We are indebted to them. Governments, people, governments are all indebted to them. And corporates too. Sovereigns, corporates, and, and individual, individuals are all, those three are all sitting under the central banks of the world. So they are the ones running everything. And then we all have debts to that we pay to the central banks. So they are the ones that run the world. They We are enslaved by them. And if you know, we're, we're fighting this game. That's why we're fighting this game down here in this sovereign world. We don't even understand what's going on. The individual is getting destroyed. We're fighting the sovereign game, but we don't even realize the game is played by the puppet masters up here. That's the biggest issue right now. We're, we're putting band-aids on bullet holes. And again, more about Washington's address. You have to go. It's not that long. Go watch it and, and understanding why we were created the, the way we were. And again, some of the big bullet points here that uh, are from his farewell address. Washington expressed his views that the United States should stay neutral and avoid permanent alliances with other nations. We should not get into other battles. We, we did here and there, the Battle of Tripoli, I believe it was Jefferson, but they would argue about these things. They, a lot of them were very, you know, hey, we just need to stay within ourselves and, and not worry about what's going on around the world. And we can, you know, people can argue about the nuance of all that, but it's the structure, it's the thought, and it's the process behind that thing. Obviously, that's not absolute. You may or will need to get into some some spats here and there and, and settle things, but it's the overall structure and the belief structure you have of not just being the policeman of the world. I just got an argument with someone the other day about we, we need to be the policeman of the world. Well, it says who? Are, are you going over there and fighting and policing everybody? Are you spending your wealth? How about you give all your wealth away to go do that? Again, why do wars exist? Mayor Amchel, Roth, Roth, Mayor Amchel Rothschild, their family, the the wife of that family, I think it was of, of Meyer, said, if my sons want war, quote, somewhat paraphrasing, but if my sons want war, we will, the war, world, world, if my sons want war, the world will have war. Because they were the central bankers. They were the ones, the beginning of central banking hundreds of years ago. I think it was three, four hundred years ago. And they were the ones that can, were the puppet strings. So that if they wanted war, they wanted to increase the popularity of a president or a king, or they wanted to uh, enrich themselves. And here we go. We're going to war, boys and girls. Oh, get those war bonds out. Jet right down here, just like in World War One, World War Two. Buy the war bonds, support your country, be patriotic. We gotta, you know, take your cash and currency so we can go fight these other evil people. Absolute insanity. We can head to another famous, another famous farewell address of, of why wars exist by Dwight D. Eisenhower, warning us against the military-industrial complex, siphoning off blood, sweat, and tears and wealth away from the citizenry. Did we heed? Either of our two former president's warnings, of course we didn't. Because why would we? Why would we learn the mistakes from the past? Why Why not? Let's be indifferent. Let's be apathetic. Let's not care at all. Let's have our cake and eat it too, boys and girls. We can do whatever we want because, by golly, we're America. Because by golly, we can do anything we want. By golly, we can just print our own currency. My, oh, my. We can outsource our manufacturing. We can outsource our labor to other countries. We can produce nothing here. We can still have our cake and eat it too. That piper is coming to be paid. Let me tell you that. In the councils of government, Eisenhower says, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. Dwight Eisenhower. Again, he saw it firsthand. He saw it in the military and in the government. Wars persist because of the perpetual currency printing machine, which we have railed on over and over and over again. The Rothschilds, everything we just talked about, again, for, I've come at this from six million different angles. The more you study this, the more it becomes so blatantly obvious. And every angle, every attack vector leads to the one thing. It leads to the currency printer. To men, it leads to rules without rulers. Or, sorry, it leads to rulers without rules. Them just creating what the, whatever rules they want. And, and if they control the money, they control the world. Exactly opposite of what the Founding Fathers wanted. They wanted gold and silver to be money. And the only thing, because you can't print that. You can't print energy. You can't print gold and silver. You can't print Bitcoin. They are finite things that cannot be taken away from the people. You actually need to put in work and effort to get that. You can't just type in digits in the computer and then steal everyone's wealth. Again, this currency printing allows governments to fund endless wars by stealing the wealth of its citizens through inflation, indirectly, stealth tax, and then taxes directly. War bonds, anybody? I know many of you have seen these posters over time. What we clearly need is separation of money and state. Just like Thomas Jefferson wrote about separation of church and state and the founding fathers, sound money that cannot be corrupted, a deflationary money that cannot be printed, a money that is tracked and has put in the work each day in order to maintain its actual value. Scarcity, decentralization, digital, it's secure. These wars were in inevitable because the military-industrial complex is in bed with the government. 
And I don't like this picture. Actually, I'm going to change this picture to the one that Fidelity had. I couldn't find the Fidelity one right away, but I know where it is now. So I'm going to get that one. That, it talks about being uh, decentralized and secure and, and scarce. These wars were inevitable, inevitable because the military-industrial complex is in bed with the government, cabinet positions being filled by lobbyists. The revolving door swings back and forth, smacking the ass of each unproductive class member as they exit and enter private and public sector each four-year cycle. We'll come on in, boys, and then we lose. Well, we're going back. Got a board position, a cushy job. You know, I'll sit in the Hamptons and then call me once a week if you guys want. And then, oh, next guy wins in the next four-year cycle in politics and get the call and right back to Washington. Here we go. Take our private choppers and we're going to fly everywhere and make our sweet backroom deals. The last three secretaries of defense, and this is going to blow you away, were all worth a combined $18 million. Over $18 million. Our current secretary of defense literally left the board in, in the complex at Raytheon, among some other companies in the private sector, which is, as you may have guessed, Raytheon builds weapons for militaries all around the world. Conflict of interest much? As you can see, the revolving door doesn't care what aisle you are on. The two-party system, we have no choice. Red or blue, doesn't matter. Oh, the last two guys are worth $5 million and this guy's worth seven. Red or blue, doesn't matter. $18 million, the last three secretary of defenses. <laughs> Not to say he or any of these men aren't qualified. Who am I to determine that? But my point is to get you thinking that this is kind of nonsense happens everywhere all the time because of a corrupt system, a corrupt currency. We don't have this with currency uh, corruption and the printing of currency in a sound monetary system. And then we actually have capitalism and free markets and price discovery and price signals. We have none of that. We haven't had that since 1913, what we've been railing on forever. When you have manipulated interest rates in a central bank that can do what it wants with rates and then debasing the currency, printing currency, then you don't have a free market. Business owners and investors and entrepreneurs can't make sound decisions, can't hire properly, can't pay fair wages because you have cronies, you have the unproductive class, politicians, screwing with the levers of the economy. So all the inputs are screwy. So how are you going to get good outputs? You don't. You can't. If only there was a way out, a new opportunity. If we had a sound money and we weren't having central banks screw with our dollar, then we never have to take ourselves off the gold standard and then, we, and then make a deal with the devil. Henry Kissinger never has to make the deal with Saudi Arabia to trade all the oil in dollars in return for our global military protection, the petrodollar. That lasted a couple decades and has bit us in the rear end, as usual, when you screw with the currency. Again, in a Bitcoin standard, that doesn't happen. It incentivizes peace and incentivizes thoughtful decision making, not only because it's all recorded on a ledger for all people to see, transparent, but more importantly, because it benefits people monetarily to be good actors, to create value through goods and services instead of stealing it through currency printing. Which, just to remind you, is not possible on a Bitcoin standard since it's finite and immutable. Can't be changed, can't be confiscated, nothing. Meaning every Satoshi accrues value over time instead of losing value like fiat dollars. Fiat dollars can be printed, so the only person that benefits is the person with the money printer, the counter, the counterfeiter. The counterfeiter printer is the only person that values, that gets to actually have the value because they get to spend it first in the circulation. They get the benefit. All of us lose purchasing power and lose our wealth. But the person holding Satoshis, holding Bitcoin, they increase their value because every time they print more currency, which is every day, the value of Bitcoin goes up over time. That's why you got to zoom out. It keeps going up. It's going to continue going up. And as it demonetizes other assets, it will continue going up every single day, year after year. And again, it cannot be taken from you if properly secured off exchanges in your cold storage. Never forgetting means never again. And again, here is the, uh, the picture, the, the, the line from the Constitution, which we'll read in a second. So as we sit back and remember those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice for us, I believe it is time to remake our monetary system, the new opportunity. It's not your fault. You didn't have anything to do with this system. The system was great for 150 years. We had a wonderful system, and it's been corrupted. It's time to take it back, but it's a new opportunity that we have now. The new opportunity we have is the Bitcoin standard. It's a deflationary monetary system. It's a finite system, an unconfiscatable, an incorruptible, an immutable system that is going to increase in purchasing power. Those that are holding it, and even if you don't hold it, your life is going to get cheaper through deflation. Whether you're holding Bitcoin or not, your life, you will benefit if you, even if you never own it. And everyone will probably have to own it at some point in the future. But even if there are multiple currencies, there's a fiat uh, CBDC, central bank digital currency, which is evil spy coin, and you never own Bitcoin for some reason, it'll still come down in purchasing power. The, the world will because it'll be everything will be priced off of Bitcoin, a finite system. So you cannot cheat things. Again, this is what the founding fathers wanted as they routinely wrote about a sound money, uh, sound monetary system 
away from central banks and back into people's hands. Thomas Jefferson, if he were alive today, would say separation of money and state is the only way. Stay strong. And again, no state shall make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts. It's from the Constitution. So what we have now, a fiat currency not backed by gold and silver, is literally unconstitutional. I rest my case. Appreciate you. Thank you for joining in here, listening. If you got something out of this, if you like it, please like and subscribe. Please share it with somebody you think might be on the edge, might be thinking these things, might help them. Please share it with them. If you don't like it, please dislike. Please let me know what you don't like, and that way we can better serve you and provide a better product going forward. Appreciate you. Please look at some of our other videos about price controls, inflation, deflation, what's coming in the last few weeks here and what's coming going forward and how to protect yourself, our investment portfolio that we just did a few days ago and exactly how we're investing in this economy, how we've literally 15 x our, our wealth in the last six years because of what we're doing, being outside the system and, and having a different approach from what you're hearing on CNBC, Bloomberg and Fox Business. So please go check that out and we will see you on the next one.